Right, well, the LK99 superconductor has been taking Elon Musk's newly named X by storm. It's grabbed the attention of scientists and journalists alike as a potentially huge scientific breakthrough. The basic idea, the superconductors allow electricity to move through them without losing energy. Energy loss from transmitting electricity has been an issue for scientists, businesses, and policymakers for decades. Now, such a discovery has been labeled as a potential game changer for energy use, but some experts it seem to be singing a different tune. With more, I'm joined by Justine Kalma, science reporter at The Verge. Good to have you on the show here. So obviously we've seen a lot of Hi. hype online. We've seen some fake videos, some, some real ones here. Break us, first break this down for us in terms of what this actually means, this, this superconductor, because a lot of people have heard semiconductor, but not superconductor. Break down why we're seeing so much hype around this. Well, you actually gave a really great introduction to, to this technology. So a superconductor is uh, a material um, through which electricity can move with zero uh, resistance. And that resistance is a really big problem because it leads to a lot of lost energy today, you know, um, on a small scale, when you think of your laptop getting hot, you know, that's energy lost as heat. On a larger scale, on a power grid, you can see um, how big of a difference this can make. And so when we talk about, um, you know, about a game changing superconductor, it's one that we can deploy in all kinds of everyday applications that could then, you know, change daily life. We do have some superconductors today, say in MRI machines, um, but the superconductors that we have today, as great as they are, they only work under extremely cold temperatures or very high uh, pressures. And so, you know, this isn't um, your typical environment and that makes them very hard to use in, in everyday applications. So what uh, this this discovery, um, what people hope it will be is the, the first room temperature superconductor that also works under ambient pressure. So basically it's, it can work in that typical environment and then you can use it on all kinds of gadgets and everyday applications potentially. Um, you know, you can have a, a perfectly efficient power grid, let's say, or uh, much more powerful uh, medical imaging machines. That is that is the hope. Um, but I'll say that we don't know that we have that yet. <laughs> and, and certainly very early days here. But in terms of use cases, I mean, you mentioned, you know, cool, cooling laptops, some people are talking about the potential for, for levitation when it comes to things like commuting and, and hyperspeed technology there. What are some of the caveats that people should keep in mind when they're looking at this technology and seeing this, this flood of stories and, and the videos popping up online? Okay, yes. The very first thing to keep in mind is that this technology, we this material called LK99, uh, which is suddenly viral on social media, you know, we don't actually know if it's a room temperature superconductor yet. Uh, we don't know for sure. It's really important to note that this uh, that this material rose to fame after it was described in a couple of research papers um, that were published uh, without peer review. They were um, published as preprints, which is usually sort of kind of an early draft of research. And uh, the gold standard is for um, research to be uh, vetted by, um, you know, by the scientific community. And that hasn't happened yet because this has not been peer reviewed yet. And so that's why you're seeing uh, this race all of a sudden of major labs and amateurs alike all trying to create LK99 and test it and see if it does what everyone is hoping that it does. Um, I'll also you know, I'll also add that, you know, worst uh, best case scenario, let's actually, let's start there with the, the potential best case scenario. If this is actually a, uh, a room temperature superconductor, there is still a, a a long way from it being a, a major scientific breakthrough, which this would be if it is if if it's real, um, and it being something that can be uh, mass produced, that can be manufactured and deployed um, in a way that makes financial sense, you know. And so that's something that experts that I've interviewed in my work also point out is that um, we 
we don't know yet if we have a room temperature superconductor. We don't know if it's going to be a scientific breakthrough, and even if it is, if it's going to be a material that can be um, th that can be easily used in in our daily lives. So those are some of the the major tests that uh, still have to be passed. And uh, there's already been a lot of drama so far along the way. <laughs> Indeed, it'd be interesting to see some of the, the, the it'd be interesting to see some of the costs involved as we do learn more about this and see some of these tests get replicated. We'll have to leave it there, but we'll definitely catch back up with you as more information about this comes out. A big thank you there to Justine Karma, science reporter at The Verge. Thank you so much.